You know, I thought after the last video that my that the hard work was uh, was already done for making good circuit boards, and I was wrong. The challenge had only just started. I had had just a taste of success, but would have many, many more failures. To make matters worse, the chip that I was trying to test with the breakout board wasn't giving me anything like what the specification said I should be getting from it. I just, I could not get this thing to work. So I would set up the, the machine, right? I gotta like prepare the board, try to flex the bend out of it, clamp it down carefully so it doesn't bow up, hook up my clips, get the probe, probe it, run the probe, get the height map of the board, and then I would load up the expensive bits and I just watched the bit plunge into the board and snap. Like, what happened? Eventually I noticed that the board, the probe height map was showing a pretty heavy slant where it was higher in the back and lower in the front. And then out of the corner of my eye, I saw it move in a way that it shouldn't have moved. And then I start jogging the Z axis up and down and it's like a, like a slippery banana, man. It's just not doing what it's supposed to do at all. The set screw was loose on the gear on the Z-axis motor. And once I jogged up and down, saw that, realized what was going on, tightened up that set screw, which was really loose, tightened it up and checked the other ones that they were all solid. Everything's really solid now. And then that fixed it. So it was just, it kept plunging into the boards because of a loose set screw. I lost like $150. I queue up another one, we dig into it, and I break the bit again. I start recording everything. I've got a camera mounted on the router. I set up a camera on a tripod to watch it. I start using the ultra slow-mo on my phone to record the bit as it's rotating. And I look at it and it looks a little wobbly. I was talking to my buddy Dave the other night and uh, he asked me what the runout was on my router and I was like, it's not too bad, but I'll have to check. So I have my little digital gauge and I put that up against the bit. I rotate the router by hand and watch the fluctuation and it's about 0.05 millimeters. That's like 25% of the thickness of the bit. So I hop on Amazon and pick up for 15 bucks. It's the best call I could find that would an ER11 call it. I pop it in the router and in my testing, it's now down from like 0.05 millimeters to like 0.03. So I cut the run out in half. And then uh, I read in a couple of places that vibration was an issue. They say like actually physically touch the router and adjust the speed and find those nodes where it has the least amount of vibration. And so I felt the router and I could actively feel that it would like start to really just hum so it's super smooth at about 90% of max power. And that happened to be almost exactly 10,000 RPM. Uh, I also, when I tried to cut, it was accelerating way too much. I was getting really sloppy lines and then the bit would break. So I had to bring the acceleration on my router way down. So I could go 115 millimeters per minute, but I needed to ramp my way up to that. Also looking from the side at the cuts I was getting in the circuit boards, I could see that they were way deeper than what I wanted, than the 0.035 millimeters I was supposed to be cutting into the board. So now I'm cutting at a depth of zero. I'm running at a feed rate of 115 millimeters per minute. 
I'm running at a very smooth rotation of 10,000 RPM. I've replaced my collet with a high precision one. Uh, I fixed the loose set screw on the Z axis. With all of that stuff dialed up, I, uh, I got good clean cuts. And in the last week, I started the day, opened an empty KitKat project, designed the little circuit that I wanted to make, and less than an hour later, I'm holding it ready to solder in my hand. Three different boards that I made this week. It works so smooth. Oh my God, it is so gratifying. So I got these really sweet analog digital converter chips. These chips are gonna be inside the joints of my robot so that they can uh, measure the flex on the joints and measure the force and weight that the joints are under. So these chips are super cool, but I kept, uh, I'd touch them with five volts, just accidentally have like a transmit where a receive pin should be, I'd like miswired on the breadboard. Boom, just the kiss of five volts kills the chip. Once I stopped cooking them and everything was working reliably, uh, I was really impressed with what these chips are capable of. You, you made it all the way through this video if you're watching this right now, so you're a machine, you're a maniac. Like, Look at your life choices. Why are you here watching this? That's crazy. But if you want to like hit the like button, <laughs> now that I put you down a bunch, please hit the like button so that more people can come and suffer through this. Uh, yeah, man. Thanks for thanks for sticking around. I'm Josh Whitman with Whitman Technological. I love science, and I hope you do too.